right, so there's the first start. Here comes the second one for the tube. Say what up, tube? What up, tube? Hey, tube. What up, tube? All right, and last but certainly not least show for the time. show. Here we go. It is showtime. In three, two, one. Welcome to another episode of Business Bros. <laughs> what up, ladies and gentlemen? Hernan C is here, host of the Business Bros Podcast, where we're helping you create wealth today and generational wealth for tomorrow, <laughs> along with my counterpart co-host the insurance bro james cs with pipeline insurance where we are empowering licensed professionals to effectively add insurance to their existing business and boy oh boy ladies and gentlemen tgif it is a beautiful friday afternoon in america's finest city and we are excited to have one of san diego's finest business attorneys in the studio today today's guest is bringing a unique ideology to legal services with a new type of law firm where we say goodbye to cold billable hours and hello to new and accessible approach to traditional legal expertise a former prosecutor today's guest was the 2019 san diego business journal woman of the year and the 2019 San Diego leader in the law. And this year, she's looking to be the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society Woman of the Year, so sign up to save lives. This powerful lady is dedicated to her team, her family, and showcases gritty leadership to inspire and empower her fellow women and entrepreneurs. It is with great pleasure that the Business Bros Pod welcomes to the show today from Slate Law Group, Miss Kelly Duford Williams. Welcome to the show. It's a lot to live up to, so hopefully I do a half decent job at that. So. You Man. already did it. Like, oh God, that's a lot. You like I'll, have so many accolades, we couldn't even fit it all in the intro. Well, I went and talked. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> well, let me go on. <laughs> oh no, please keep talking about me. Yeah, I know. Keep that's telling lot, me though. how wonderful I am. It's a lot to live up to, so. But yeah, you. those are things you've done, though. Like, exactly. You know, it's not like it's not like these are fantasy things that you hope to do someday in the future. Like, these are accolades, that, things you've done, you've, you've accomplished, and you're just getting started. Hopefully, honestly, hopefully. I mean, on it, I, it's like it's an honor. Anytime anything like that happens, it's like you don't realize it that it's happening, and then you're like, whoa, and you see it like almost like when I got San Diego Business Journal one of the year. I watched the speech back and I was like who do I think I am and it was like (laughs) very cool um but you know you're running so fast that you don't slow down to think about all the cool things because like it's just like it's a passion project for me I knew from like eight years old I wanted to be a lawyer I moved here from Ireland when I was six seven eight something like that we left Ireland when I was six moved to France and then moved to the states when I was eight so I have that immigrant mentality the Irish woman non-educated mentality when they when my mom was growing up so much history there and so for me it's like I always wanted to be a lawyer um I I knew I wanted to stand up for other people and their rights and so like if I was gifted with an education then that was my passion so um it's like one very surreal and then also like always driven purpose knew that's always what I wanted to do so but that driven purpose like is it is it something that was like like pushed on you at home or is this just something that like you genetically that's who you are um you know, it's funny because my mom will take all the credit for sure for my personality and that kind of stuff. But when it comes to like um, drivenness, like it, it's genetic. My dad, he started as a computer. So I'm the first um, female in my family to go to college. My dad um, got his associate degree in computer programming in 1979. And he started um, in Ireland as a computer programmer. And when he left IBM in 2008, he was a senior vice president. And so I think it's very much genetic. Um, I'm blessed. Like very, he's very steady. He's very business oriented. Um, and so um, my parents always said like they were surprised when I didn't bring home A's. Like, and then I was too hard on myself that they wouldn't yell at me. So I was like, I got a B plus. I would like go cry about it so they didn't have to discipline me about it. So like, it's, <laughs> but I think it's genetic. Like it wasn't. It was nature for sure, or nurture, in the fact that they like were like you have to work hard. They gave me a great education, which I hope one day I can pay them back for. Um, but for sure, I think it's like somewhat genetic. So great education, but you decided to go into law. Why law of all things? You know, I think it was a strong desire to be able to protect myself and others from anything that I felt like was not justice oriented. So like in Ireland growing up, like women, so when my parents got married, divorce was not legal in Ireland. Women were not able to have birth control. All women, like there were certain requirements in order to get birth control in like the 1990s. Um, when 
so abortion was not legal, still is not to a certain degree. And like so many restrictions were put on women in Ireland that people don't know about. That for me, it was like about being able to stand up for other people and say, hey, listen, like, you know, this is what I feel is just not right or wrong but like this is like the actual equilibrium and so that's kind of sometimes like why I enjoy having my own firm now and initially why I wanted to be a DA is because I thought well justice is being done in the DA's office so um you know when I was eight years old I told my parents I wanted to be a district attorney and when you were eight Mm -hmm. I was terrifying as a child you're kind of terrifying now. Let's be honest. Like I'm, I'm a little like you know I I don't mind being around co- competitive natured people, right? Yeah. I think it's a really cool thing. Yeah. But every once in a while, you you come across somebody that's just like like Kobe Bryant level. You know what oh, I mean? Well, sweet like, Jesus, don't tell me I'm like that. Well, I mean, <laughs> that's a big of a compliment. But I, we were talking a little bit about be you know before the show. You you have three little kids mm-hmm. at home. You built a law firm you're a female in a male driven industry like there's something behind that it's not just uh you know i like the law and i want to help people there's more behind that like there's i I feel like you like dream about this you sleep on i mean you you think about it before you go to bed you might be you know with your kids reading them a story but you're thinking about how it's gonna you know affect that character in the story is gonna be affected by some law somewhere well i think like i do i think i talk about from my cases in my sleep um but i I dream about it I love it like even when I, was, I when I was a DA I had side hustles of like wanting to be an entrepreneur and I kind of always toyed with those two things like owning my own firm to be honest kind of somewhat fell in my lap did not but like growing it scaling it for sure was like badass hard work like don't get me wrong but I I always thought I wanted to be a deputy DA but I do like I breathe I eat I sleep this like people think like we were talking about Dan earlier like that you just show up one day and you're talented like it is damn hard work like when it comes to the end of the day like your name is the one on who owes everyone their paycheck who takes the paycheck last if it's not there gets to take it first when it's awesome don't get me wrong there's no like (laughs) qualms about that but that being said like that's my responsibility so it's like love eat breathe sleep what I do for sure but there's a difference between loving law and going and working at a law firm and helping people to being an entrepreneur and building your own how'd you know you wanted to like go into building your own thing well i mean truly for me um i didn't think it was a perfect legal system and it was very obvious like before we started our firm um i started it with craig now it's just you know i own the firm with a couple of new partners but i'm by far by far the majority owner but that being said i couldn't do it without them they're amazing and very talented But when it was three years ago when we started it, it was about like creating a firm that was millennial driven, knowing that this like 80 year old, no offense to 80 year old white men, but um, that they were not like necessarily everyone's cup of tea when Mm -hmm. it came. Like they're great. Like, you know, if you want to go to that firm and pay $800 an hour to get good service, wonderful. But like there's also a new generation of people that are coming up. We did studies on it. What do do millennials want to see now out of the law? And millennials now go almost all the way up to 40. um, And so like we were looking at the new generation what I did not like about the civil current system which was like bill clients down to the the hour as much money as we can suck out of them that doesn't bring good client relationships like what brings good client relationships is letting bringing the clients in letting them experience something and then letting them they are valued like I won't bill my time often just to show people hey like listen thanks for being awesome all my people have to get paid but I won't get paid and like things like that being accessible being yourself being transparent I felt like the law needed an entrepreneur lift over or like a facelift when it comes to like how it was going to work and what people want to see. Yeah, of the everyone hates yeah. lawyers. Like, I don't yeah. trust you. What are you doing? It's like there's a way to do it and like genuinely enjoy it and have people really like you and have people refer you business. Or there's a way to like jack up your bills so much that like no one wants to talk to you tomorrow. So yeah. that was a big secret was like people would refer us business because we wouldn't screw them over. What are some of those like times in your career that kind of shaped that idea that this is what I want to do. I want to change the dynamic of the way it's being done. <laughs> like what, what, what kind of yeah, terrible so, story client stories did you come across? Well, I mean, I specifically remember being pregnant with my first child and a uh, plaintiff's attorney giving me advice on like sleep training, etc. I went down to one of the partner's office and I said, Hey, listen, like, I don't think we should build this to the client. Like I was on the call for this amount of time. And I know it's tracked by the phone, but like, we weren't talking about legal stuff and they were like well you were on my time bill it it's the phone system and I was like I'm sorry what like so they're my clients getting billed for me talking to plaintiff's counsel about you know preschool and sleep training Mm. and so for me it was kind of that thing which was like are we being honest are we being upfront? like are we billing them for actual time spent on legal things because if you do 
and you show them that, then you're going to win every time. But if you're dishonest just to make an extra couple thousand dollars, you're going to end up losing long term. And people want to see transparency. And I mean, millennials want like authentic no matter what. Like, let's be honest. Like, I don't look like a lawyer necessarily. Like, Like, I mean... If I, you know, put on the right thing, do that right thing, like, but if I'm going to Lululemon on the weekend, I, you don't go, oh, she's a badass she, lawyer. Yeah, yeah. So she's it's a like, badass lawyer that gets ID. That's what happens. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so like Lululemon and sneakers is not me, or is me very much. And if I'm authentic to that, but not everyone can do that. Not every, everyone's trying to put on a show, right? And mm-hmm. so if I'm just who I am, I think that like comes across in a different manner. So I think being authentic in general and just saying like, listen. I am who I am and I'm badass at my job. And if you don't want to hire me, best of luck. I will be on the, like the other side. See how it goes, you know? So tell me a little bit about, uh, you, you. I mean, earlier we were talking about how you're branching off. What what kind of law did you decide when you started your firm to get into? So business law was what I wanted to do. I just have always had a passion for business. So when, it, when I was leaving criminal, I went over to like fraud investigations, like special investigations on like the corporate insurance business side. And I did that for three years. And um, then when it came to starting the, the firm, I wanted to do business because I loved entrepreneurs. I love the idea of helping people in their business. Um, I was always a litigator, loved trial. So I liked arguing. And so, shocking, <laughs> shocking news. Um, so um, I love right? that good cross examination. Yeah. <laughs> I love. So um, for me, like doing business, corporate, employment law, I felt like I could affect change in some manner, whether it be minorities, women, whatever it was. I mean, that's not at all what we service just generally but for me it was like okay I can affect change in some way here by like giving them an alternate to a different like large firm downtown will be awesome and large and badass but we won't necessarily be the like normal legal structure and I felt like there was something to be changed there so man I wish I would have known you like a couple years ago you know me now (laughs) I know you now I just said a lawsuit it sucked man going through all that kinds of stuff I would have done it better yeah I know you would have you're (laughs) fierce like just in the connection like I'm telling you just getting to know you like like yes I got a good vibe here this is who I want watching my back you know what I mean no I take it seriously like I love it like I love like I breathe eat sleep it like I love it so what if, if if you got a new business when at what point should you as a business consult an attorney I mean, if you're serious, like, are you an Instagram, like, business that's going to last for, like, three months? But if you're more than, like, if you're really serious about doing business, immediately. You don't want to be, like, the person who was a solo entrepreneur for a year or two and then, like, now has to convert to an LLC, do an S. Like, you know, it's like, if you mean business, do your incorporation at the beginning. Do a half-decent contract. Like, save, like, we're the type of firm where it's, like, you come in, we will do your fictitious business name if you want us to. We'll do your contract. Like, we'll do small stuff. We litigate at a high level, but, like, we will service anyone who wants to be our client and we'll do it at a good, you know, a good rate. But I think if you're going to be serious about your business, like being an LLC or a corporation, sending people a message saying like, listen, I take myself seriously. So take me seriously. And a good contract will save you so many times. And to be honest, like it's a much different consultation when I walk in and someone has personal liability on the line. Once you're mm-hmm. an LLC or a corporation, you're mostly insulated from any version of personal liability unless you've like done something terrible. Pierce the corporate veil at that point. Oh, yeah. Did you go to law school? No, I did not go to law school, but <laughs> I'm trust you me. know, you're shit. I, yeah, well, <laughs> I mean, 15 years of being in different businesses, yeah. I've seen some stuff. Yeah, right? intentional torts, piercing the corporate veil, you got it. So um, it's a much different conversation like when you're talking about personal liability or just your business liability, mm-hmm. right? So like if you're serious about your business, like I would see a business attorney in the first couple months Get your LLC or S corp if required, like you know, legal or real estate. You have to be an S corp. Um, get your EIN. Do it the right way. Get your contracts. There's a couple like key things that then you'll go out looking professional versus like looking like someone who got a template offline and hasn't their fictitious. Like you know, it just it just looks more professional. And says I take myself seriously, so take me seriously. Yeah, I well, I mean that that totally makes sense because I mean you're right. The the only issue that I always see with with starting off entrepreneurs is like. It's a cash flow thing. Anytime yeah. you think of an attorney, you think that's a price tag. But see, so I think that's something unique we bring, and particularly I bring, because anytime a new business owner sits down with him, I'm like, I get it. Like, you don't have a whole bunch of legal money. If all you have is X, Y, Z, these are your options. And it, it cracks me up, though, like how many, like, millennial business owners will spend, like, $2,500 doing their Instagram photos, branding photos, and branding. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I'm sorry, like, would you like to be so – like, I don't get it. Like, you <laughs> want to get your photos taken – but you aren't concerned about the fact that you might be sued tomorrow and lose everything. So like that says more than like your branding does. So choose where you spend. Like if you have 10 K to spend, you got to see how you're going to budget that out or 5 K or even two $2,500. You can form an LLC for less than $2,500 for sure. And that's one of those things where hindsight is one of is, is 
I you know I've been in business for a long time, and and the insurance company we've had we've had a, uh, I want to say ten years or something like that, um, and in ten years nothing's ever happened until recently right yeah. and it becomes one of those things where you have those years under your belt and yeah. your company's been around and it has those inc at the end of it mm -hmm. that when when you get sued oftentimes they're not even going after you as an individual like for us i know for sure they were going after our policies yeah. our insurance policies which is huge too by the way it's better than individual if yeah. you have a good insurance policy and people know about that, then like it's almost better that way. Yeah, but it puts a huge target on your back. And For if sure. you don't, you know, and we that's one of those things that we talked about as as we're scaling, as we continue to grow. Um, you know, some of the things that especially James over here is always telling me, dude, IT and legal, IT and legal, and insurance. IT and legal. Well, yeah, we, I agree. Yeah. And, and insurance, because honestly, like if you have a good insurance policy too, legal for sure. IT, taxes, like all very important. But if you have a good insurance policy too that like will cover your legal costs of being, you know, defending any suit, that's good too. But legal for sure, you need to talk to an attorney because you're exposing yourself to huge liability, especially if you're not incorporated. Yeah, anymore. we're definitely going to talk because even then, I mean, we have our contracts. Um, we had some that re looked really, really nice. And then we have some that uh, now we are, we're using and we every time we look at the contract and we change it, we're like, we need an attorney to look at this thing. We need an attorney to look at this thing. Well, the cool thing is that we do on demand, which is like a very cool program, which means that like you can hire us for two hours a month, every month, like at a seriously discounted rate. You can either do associate based or partner based. So if you're like, definitely want a partner looking at it, like, listen, no, I just want an associate with some supervision from a partner. There's different options. And so we do like at least half of the cost of a normal hourly rate for two hours for that exact reason, which is like, hey, someone just sent this back to us and we need to know what to do. Um, so we like set up like exactly what I'm saying is about like, you know, knowing what millennials want. It's like we want to have it cost effective and we want it, you know, on demand. We want it right now. So we have Slack channels for all of our on demand clients where they can message us as though we're their own in-house counsel. And it's not crazy expensive, but for that exact thing, which is like someone just sent me red lines. They want it back by the end of the day. Can you have someone look at it? Like what's realistic? What's OK? What's not? What do you accept? What do you not? And it's great because like, that's what you guys want. Like we expect it all right now, you know? I mean, and you're, utilizing, you're utilizing some of that technology. How do you like Slack? Like, <laughs> we're running our insurance agency with all our insurance agents exactly kind of the same way. Slack for each individual. So know. I'm not going to lie. So when I was, I think I was like on the cut. Well, I definitely graduated into the recession. Even like law school, um, 2011 was definitely the recession. And so like when I was a DA, like we were, I was competing with like three or four hiring classes just to get a few spots. And so um, I know that feeling. I, I mean, when I was 21, the iPhone came out so like I'm like in that like cusp generation of like we know what the iPhone is we know how cool we are but like all these 20 somethings like know so much more than we do so I have some amazing people in my office Esther who's been with me for two and a half two years um who will set things up um, a couple of my um associates that like know more than I do about Slack OneDrive Google and I'm always telling them like listen this is the frame of mind of a business owner in their 40s 50s even their 30s and they need to be able to use it and so like rolling, what's the cloud right <laughs> well like i like i at least know that but i'll tell you right now like slack even three years ago i was like what how does this work and then like, even up until like six months ago my associates were like uploading things to slack and i had to download it and i was like i'm very confused <laughs> um but they all know what they're doing and it's great because you can utilize them to like say hey like how can we use this technology in a legal sense with um also like explaining it well to some of our 30 40 50 year old clients that they feel like you're getting the attention and on demand that they need but we still make it basic enough that they can understand it. And like, if you're ahead of that curve, you're going to win every time, you know, and they feel important, which is which is what they, they want to feel heard and important. Yeah. It's the client experience that makes all the difference in For the sure. world. Like there's that you said it at the beginning, it's the reason why they're going to refer you out. You can make a lot of money off one client, yeah. but if that one client never talks about you again, yeah, exactly. that's, that's horrible for business. So tell me how you took your law firm from you to now what you said 25 people in your office yeah, so, expanding so we are it's insane like i would say that like you know we started we were at like i think we made like was i mean on taxes a loss for sure but i think the first year we made like 100 grand or something like that um now um definitely past the seven figure like going to hopefully double again in revenue this year i think it's really truly like one, being an entrepreneur at heart and knowing what people want and that instinct, that emotional intelligence, like emotional intelligence above everything else is so valuable, like valuable, like you cannot learn that. Um, You're in a high stress environment. Like but emotional intelligence and strategy in the legal world is like even more like when you're litigating, that's like, it's like gold, you know, but even on the, on the like client side, it's like, if you know what clients want with how they want to feel heard and how it is, then you're going to like 
knock it out of the park every time. Like people just want to hear like that you're there. When someone gets a like a demand letter, you just they want to hear, "Hi, I'm here. Here's what we're gonna I do. I'll you. meet with you in 48 hours. I got you. Don't worry about it. Let me stress for you," which is my job. Um, and so, but for me, I think it's a client experience, being referable, making people feel like they had a good, solid experience with us. Um, and I think like being good to your people, good culture. Sometimes you get taken advantage of, and it's exhausting, and people are, you know, difficult. But I think if you stay true to like putting good things on the universe and good karma, it comes back. Um, and I think just an instinct for business too, you know, how, how do you, how did you decide to start marketing yourself? Like I, I always wonder, <clears throat> attorneys are always worried about, you know, they can't say anything wrong. You see an attorney commercial, it's got all kinds of like disclosures at the end, disclaimers and all kinds of stuff. Like how does an attorney go out and begin to acquire clients? I mean, so I truly like, I, I, I built this law firm on relationships and for me, it was just be like being authentic. Like, I mean, I know that I'm not like a. 40 year old white male and I get that like I need some business partners some associates that are you know men or this or speak Spanish whatever someone wants like I get that but if you're not authentic to yourself no one's gonna want to hire you because they're not gonna believe anything that comes out of your mouth and mm -hmm. like I know I'm a badass like I know not to F with me like I know that like I should terrify people because like I feel that way and I believe it I also know that I'm 33 and like don't exactly look like a lawyer unless I really try to and I haven't since I mean I graduated law school 23 24 at the DA's office and no one believed I was a lawyer then either and I can guarantee what's gonna happen until another 20 years or so I will still get questioned but if you like if you can own who you are like I'm a unicorn somewhat in my industry and if I can grab onto that and embrace it and not try to be something I'm not like be a first-rate version of yourself not a second-rate version of someone else and that's kind of how like I've enjoyed it you know it's funny that passion that I see in your eyes I wonder we've been we've been setting up uh a course for us that I want to help people start their podcast. Right. Yeah. And I'm like super excited about it because of just what it's done for us. Yeah, like, you know what I mean? Sure. Building a brand on your own and Heck getting yes. that message out there. Like you can't see it, ladies and gentlemen, but I got like stats on the board over there. Right. And I was, I was, I was doing a little bit of research and you know, jumping into things like, like TikTok right now, for example, is taking yeah. off. Right. Very That's a, loves that, right? Yeah. He's, he's, it's a great fan. But as far as medians are concerned, I was like, I learned YouTube, there's like 31 million channels out there. Blogs, there's like 50 million channels. Podcasts, less than a million. Yeah. Someone and told me to start a podcast. You like should. Yeah. You should. You absolutely yeah. should. I mean, think about it. Every single person that you talk to, it, it like, for me, it's like, I, I got to meet you. Without this podcast, I doubt, unless you were like against me, like a pit bull where I'd be terrified, I what doubt I would have like ever you know, Dan, met you. You might have met through Dan at some point. You, maybe, but I met Dan through the podcast too. There you go. You know what sure. I'm saying? Like there's so many great connections that you can make through That's a true. show like that. I mean, no, people have said it to me, like you're doing something much different in law and you should like, you have already a following, so you should create it into something. But I'm like, when do I have the time? If someone like, I, I would figure, I'll figure it out. Maybe I should do it this year. You should, you should. Yeah. Well, we're going to be putting together like a full service thing. So like yeah. where we come out, we'd stand, you'd spend one day, we'd record everything, so we'd cool. edit it, post it, do all your social media stuff. Yeah. So that's something that's, that we're. Well, don't tell my social media person that you're going to do her social media job. She'll not be <laughs> well, we'll provide her with the content there she needs go. to, uh, to post out each stuff that you want. Good. But that, that's the whole point. It's like this interaction that we're having is now 30 minutes of long form content that you're going to chop up your social media person is mm -hmm. going to reuse and now you got all kinds of short so true stuff. so true and plus i mean think about everybody you want to reach out to and meet yeah and i think like when you say like branding i think that's one of the most important things right like you have to know who you are because like for me it's like i will only like it sounds crazy but i only wear certain colors get my nails in certain colors like i know my brand but it's you yes yeah, my personal brand and like you can see me walking down the street and go okay that's her brand and it's never going to change. Like, I'm not going to pretend to be someone I'm not. And I think that you guys being who you are in your podcast is huge too. It's it's all you you said it nailed it before. It's authenticity. Like yeah. the people are going to work with you because they know like and trust you, and that's just who you are. Like if you ever if I ever wanted to hire a pit bull and then I got a poodle, like yeah. there's going to oh. be a whole different ball game. For you know sure. what I mean? But you want a pit bull that maybe doesn't look like a pit bull, which is like the biggest advantage. Yeah, yeah. It, it reminds me. It was a. It was a. The alien movie. What's was the movie where that it has that little cat, and the cat like opens up and it's like a yeah. big old tentacle. It's like Captain Marvel, man. Oh, it's Captain Marvel. You don't see me coming. Come on, it's a, <laughs> it's a flirkin. I mean, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, you fail. But I'm telling you right now, like. I, it's so funny because I was talking about this with um, one of the people who runs my tax firm and she was talking about how she's perceived as a female um, IR, like she's an enrolled agent, works with the IRS and it's like, I love it because like you don't see me coming and then halfway through the depot, you're like, oh shit, like 
she knows what she's doing. I'm like, yeah. But it's an awesome feeling. I did this. Uh, I went to go sit in in the, like a financial planning thing, right? Yeah. And I showed up and I have my business bro shirt and I'm, and oh, I'm yeah. meeting people, right? And there's one guy that walks in and he's, you know, older gentleman, right? You know, and he and I go up to him and, and you know, the camera's right there and he's like, kind of like blowing you off a little bit. And I'm like, okay, cool. So we sit down. That never everybody starts talking. No. Yeah, ne- never. never. Well, we sit down, start talking and they're, they're talking about different, you know, areas of life and different, and, you know, different stuff. And I, so I start giving my two cents and my backgrounds in accounting and taxes. Yeah. Right. And so all of a sudden, like I see, I can see his mind shift as he's yeah. like, Oh, he knows what the heck he's talking mm-hmm. about. Like, and at the end he's like, Hey, I really want to meet you now. Like yeah. all of a sudden it's a completely different dynamic. If you don't see it coming, it's amazing. Yeah. And it's, it's great in the law because, like, when you're litigating and they don't see it coming, it's even better. You catch them by surprise. Yep. So, okay, so now you're opening these two other divisions. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about those. Yeah, so we, are so we like, by huge demand, decided to open a tax um, division of our firm. So we, um, Jessica Smith, who's heading it up, um, is was a friend of mine who I used and referred out in 1099 for a while. So badass at her job. And so she's heading up her own department. There's... Um, people under her and we're hiring a couple more too as we go on which was like a lot of people wanted tax questions asked and I couldn't answer them I said mm-hmm. you got to talk to your CPA your enrolled agent now we get to say here's our tax department set up a consult with them talk to them or hey they can jump in do you want someone to talk about whether you should be an S corp or not do you want someone to talk about your settlement money how like this convertible note is going to deal with like your personal liability versus business liability they can jump in and do that on a high level or you know just for f- formation purposes um, on the legal side like hiring one of our um associates mike colson is a jd accountant and so we can jump like bring him in on like things that don't matter when it comes to accounting and doing damages calculations and then on the hr side like you know we have this on-demand service where people are spending a lot of money having lawyers do a lot of their employment law stuff that you could save money doing on the hr side so we're building out a software version of that and bringing someone in to do like just like a pure hr standpoint like less expensive at least half the cost to just do like offer letters job descriptions like all that stuff that matters and then technology-wise, we're rolling out some stuff, including creating, like, templated versions of things that you can then have a lawyer review for you if you're, like, that's your jam. I'd much rather you have a template that we fix and we like than you go to, like, you know, Google and go, independent contractor agreement. Like, that could be yeah. like a panic attack. And that's gonna be, like, <laughs> eight hours of my time where it could have been two, you know? So just really, like, listening to what people want, what people are already doing, and, like, capitalizing on that and, like, creating a, a bridge between like cost effective and education and like expertise because that's what people want. They don't want to be told here are your option like a, you know, $5,000 contract or $2,500 contract versus like Google it. Like it's like there has to be something in between and if you don't get that, then you don't get your market as a Yeah, it doesn't work. Yeah. It doesn't work. But it sounds to me like you are being more interested in what your clients are looking for than just law. Like, I know. You're, it's like, it's a mix of the two, which is like great that I get to do it. But for sure, like I love like reading people and entrepreneur and how can we do this and how can we, you know, make it more effective for people. I mean, that's how it works. But also like I love winning, like I'm a very justi- like justice oriented person in life. So like when I look at like, you know, any sort of situation, like my kids, like who, who's arguing over the toy versus like, how did this corporation handle like the firing? You're of litigating your, t- your kids. Oh, those poor children. I don't, I don't know what is harder. <laughs> managing like my cases and employees at times or like they, they serve both purposes I'm like I'm gonna need you to put your listening ears on and I said to my parents the other day I was like mom and dad can you put your listening ears on for a minute because it's the preschool and my parents were like, <laughs> and I'm like here we I, go and they're like I need you I'm like okay that was insulting but I do need you to hear me talk right now it's very important because I have three kids in a law firm so I'm gonna need you to hear this mom and she's like but she, I mean, they're, they're all so, so tolerant, so patient with me. They're both like, okay, that's great. We do know you have a lot going totally on. Totally going to use that. No, yeah, they're going to kill me. Yeah, yeah. 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 No, you should. Yeah. No, like they, my, my now nanny, who was my daughter's two-year-old preschool, or when she was two, her preschool teacher was like, they did this like listening or something. I was like, that's amazing. You know, it's funny. Those, those kindergarten on. preschool strategies, yeah. they work for adults. For so many people, including me. Like if someone was like, turn your listening ears on, I'd be like, okay, thank you. Isn't there like a book that's like everything I need to know in life I learned in kindergarten? Dude, it's true though. Yeah. I mean, be nice ears. to people, share, listening yeah. ears. Get more bees, bees with honey than or whatever. Yeah. 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 So, um, but no, I like, but also like our culture is fun, right? Like our firm culture is fun and like not everyone goes, oh, we have to listen to Kelly. I mean, once I like terrify the life out of them, sure. But like in general, we like to have fun, like 
and give each other a hard time. But like for me, it's like, okay, now we're actually listening. This has to get done. So litigation, taxes, HR. I think they're only missing insurance. Right? <laughs> and it's, it's actually one of the three things I tell people. I'm like corporation, like some sort of corporate formation, even on the small side, contract and insurance. And a little bit of intellectual property, if it makes sense for your business. But insurance is one thing we don't do. But I always tell people, like, you need it from the beginning. Why, so. why is that? I, I kind of wonder, like, one of the things we, we try to do is help people take their existing book of business. You have, you're have you an accountant, for example. You have this existing book of business. Let's add another revenue stream to it. Let's add insurance to it. You're a mortgage lender. Like, there's another avenue to do that. Why, why do people hesitate with the insurance side? Why I don't do know. You? Well, so... I actually do know because I've done bad faith insurance and won a lot of money for people. But that being said, it doesn't make sense to me because at the worst case scenario, then you have to go the bad faith route, right? So like and get a good What's insurance. bad faith? Meaning your insurance, you paid your premiums every month over and over again and your insurance, your insurance company did not cover what they said they were going to cover, mm-hmm. which is effed up. You either get totally. it and you can get it on the contract side, like breach of contract, but if it's punitive, like they knew and they should have known that they should cover it and it was malicious, you can get a lot of money. Um, hmm. And so we won cases in the millions and like for clients and it's a great like legal industry and it's great to have an advocate if your insurance company's not paying out that being said the majority of insurance companies know their fiduciary duty their duty of loyalty and their duty to their contract and their client and so if you get sued worst case scenario your insurance is probably going to cover it and pay for your legal fees so like for me it's huge it's like especially if you have employees in california it's like a like it's a lightning rod for like once you have five employees in california you need to go see an attorney immediately. You need an employee handbook, you need insurance, you need everything done possible because you're open to FIHA, which is um, basically the statute where like discrimination on the like state level is open and you should have USLA, like, your, what is it EPLA. called? EPLA. Yeah, yeah. Um, insurance and you should make that happen for sure because otherwise like you're going to get sued. Best of luck, but you will get sued eventually. And those things are harsh, mm-hmm. man. I'm telling you. <laughs> oh, they're awful. Work. It's just you have to do the wrong thing once and it, like it's not a good thing. Good idea. Not even if it was malicious. You know yeah. what I mean? Doing the wrong thing doesn't mean you were intentional in doing the wrong thing. No, but if you were intentional, then it gets like... It gets worse. Much worse. Yeah. For sure. If anyone can improve intention, it's much worse. But just being sued in general. Like, I mean, I always say our transactional department is a lot less expensive than our litigation department. But if you don't want to pay me for your contract, great. We'll see you when you get sued. <laughs> That's what he keeps telling me. He's like, dude, we got to send it yeah, over. Yeah, I'm like, you send best it over. of luck. But like, honestly, like, we'll see you when you get sued. And I mean, you want me on your side, but I'd rather much like I'd much rather be responsible for the contract that doesn't get you sued than see you when you're being sued. Protect you ahead of time. Yeah. Yeah. See. Well, at least we know. And now we know somebody. Yeah. Because that's that's kind <laughs> of a big thing. I've been saying, ain't I been saying it, Miguel? For ten damn years, you've been saying. Ten it. damn years, I've been saying <laughs> it. I mean, that's how long I've been practicing law. It just took me coming here to get you to realize it. Right. I knew it is. It's fortuitous. Right. right? Yeah. It, was, it was in the stars. So what's what's next? What do you got? What do you got in line? Like coming down the pipe? I mean, I know someone like you has uh, a vision beyond where you're going now. What's what, what do you think? Like if you were to fast forward the clock ten years? Oh sweet lord, that's way too long for me. But that, I mean, in an ideal world, I mean, I'll always be a business owner. I think I'll. So we're doing a two floor build out of our new space, which should be wrapped up in the next month or so, which is super exciting. And so moving from a twenty six hundred square foot space to a 10,000 square foot space has been insanely stressful and awesome at the same time. Um, it's, uh, you know, timelines and commercial real estate are fascinating to me because I'm like, I want it now immediately. I'm an instant gratification person. So that new office will be in the next couple months. But over time, I want to, I want to do an Austin office, a New York office, a Boulder, Denver office. I want offices across the country in cities that I want to live in. Um, and I feel like, and I also feel like entrepreneurs are in. Yeah. Um, and so that's what I'd like to see for Slate Law Group. And then I don't know where I'll be in 10 years. I mean, honestly, I couldn't have told you six months ago that I would necessarily be sitting here um, in this like situation that I'm currently in. And so for me, it's like, I don't like to predict the future that much, but I know I'll always be an entrepreneur. I know I will always want adventure and excitement. And I know I'll always care about people and justice. And I know I will, um, like, I, I won't sit still. So yeah. we'll see. It's going to be one hell of a ride. Ugh. All right. Well, I mean, <laughs> now that people know who you are as far as our audience, I know as a business owner, I'm going to be talking to you a little bit more. I want you to look at that camera. Tell people how to get a hold of you. Sure. So I think the best way to get a hold of me is probably like for your audience, maybe it's my Instagram. I don't know who really, but um, so it's Kelly. Actually, I actually don't even know. It's Kelly D. Williams, E-S-Q um, on Instagram. And then my um, email is uh, K. E. D. Williams at Slate Law Group 
and um, phone number is probably right below me, which is better than actually me saying it. Um, but um, so any of those avenues are great. Um, I mean, you know, Facebook, uh, Slate Law Group, but just, you know, Google Slate Law Group and see if I show up. And for anybody just listening to the audio, that phone number is 619-546-4291. Ooh. I mean, I love that. It's great because I will always yell at um, my assistant or office manager. What's a phone number? They're What's like, a phone number? Send yeah. your email signature, <laughs> Kelly. Open your email. But you don't call yourself. No, I, I can't call myself. I mean, no one actually really wants to call me unless they have to. So. Let's see. Or unless they want to get a, a a head start in protecting themselves. That's when they well, should be Well, correct. Calling. Correct. Because that's, that's a big difference. I Huge mean, difference. Oh my gosh. Don't do what we did. Don't wait. Don't wait. Don't wait till you get sued. Do it ahead of time. Hell Protect yeah. yourself. <laughs> it's been amazing. Yes. Yeah, so nice to meet you I guys. love getting to know you. I can't wait to see where you go. I mean, I'm telling you, you don't see it coming, but she's coming. <laughs> Shark status. <laughs> I look so nice. You do. All right, <laughs> ladies and gents, uh, that's all we got for you guys today. We'll see you on the flip side. Have a great weekend. Peace. Bye bye. And Thank we're you. out. Bye, Facebook. Love you. Thank you so much for tuning in.